Toilet paper. Something we all use every day, but have you ever thought about how it's made? It's such a common product, yet the process behind it is pretty interesting. Whether it's for home, office, or public use, toilet paper is something everyone needs, and it plays an important role in our daily lives. Have you ever wondered how a simple roll of toilet paper is transformed from raw materials to the soft, absorbent sheets we use? It might seem like a simple product, but a lot goes into manufacturing the toilet paper you find in stores. Did you know that the average person uses about 57 sheets of toilet paper per day? That's a lot of rolls. In today's video, we'll show you exactly how toilet paper is made in factories, from the moment raw materials are sourced all the way to when it's packaged and shipped out. You'll see how the paper is turned into soft, fluffy rolls and how it's prepared for you to use. We'll break down the steps, from the processing of wood fibers to the cutting, drying, and packaging of the final product. Stick around as we take you behind the scenes of one of the most widely used products in the world. If you're curious about every step of the manufacturing process, make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos about how everyday products are made. Toilet paper starts with a very basic but vital raw material, wood fibers. These fibers are the building blocks that give toilet paper its softness, strength, and absorbency. But where do these fibers come from, and how are they prepared for the manufacturing process? Most of the raw materials used in toilet paper come from wood pulp, which is derived from softwood trees like pine, spruce, and fir. These trees are chosen because they have long fibers that can be processed into the soft yet durable tissue we rely on every day. These forests, often found in North America, Europe, and South America, provide the vast majority of the wood pulp used for paper products, including toilet paper. The harvesting process is more than just chopping down trees. First, trees are carefully selected and felled. But it doesn't stop there. Once the trees are cut down, the bark is removed, and the logs are then processed into wood chips. These chips are then taken to a pulp mill, where the fibers are separated and turned into a slurry known as pulp. The pulp is what will eventually be turned into paper, and the entire process is labor-intensive, requiring workers to manage both the mechanical equipment and the trees that need to be cut and processed. Not all trees are used equally. To ensure that the raw materials are of the highest quality, each tree is carefully inspected, and only the best wood is chosen for making pulp. Lower quality wood is often used for products like cardboard, while higher quality wood fibers are saved for premium products like toilet paper. Did you know that on average, a single tree can produce about 1,000 rolls of toilet paper? This means that forests around the world play an essential role in providing the raw materials for the vast demand for toilet paper. However, sourcing these raw materials responsibly is important to ensure sustainability. Many manufacturers are focused on sourcing wood pulp from certified sustainable forests, meaning the forests are managed in a way that ensures the long-term health of the ecosystem. These certifications, such as FSC, Forest Stewardship Council, or SFI, Sustainable Forestry Initiative, help guarantee that the trees harvested are replenished, keeping the cycle of nature in balance. Once the wood is processed into wood chips, the next step is pulping, where the wood chips are cooked with a mixture of chemicals and heated water to break down the fibers. This process separates the cellulose fibers in the wood from the lignin, the natural glue that holds the fibers together. Once the fibers are separated, they're washed, bleached, and cleaned to remove any contaminants. This results in the creation of pulp, a mixture of cellulose fibers that is the main component used to make paper, including toilet paper. The quality assurance of the raw materials is a key part of the process. The pulp must meet very specific standards in terms of purity, color, and texture. Manufacturers typically take samples of the pulp and test it for moisture content, strength, and softness. The pulp is also tested for chemical residue, ensuring that it's safe and free from any harmful substances. All these tests help ensure that the final product will be smooth, soft, and safe for use. Once the pulp is ready, it is transported to the next stage, where it will undergo a series of steps that turn it into the toilet paper we know. The process from pulp to finished product involves multiple machines and steps, all designed to transform the pulp into a usable product. The importance of the raw materials, particularly the quality of the pulp, cannot be overstated. The softer the pulp, the better the toilet paper will feel against the skin, and the stronger the pulp, the more durable the paper will be. 
The process ensures that only the highest quality fibers make it to the next stage of manufacturing, where they will be turned into the soft rolls we rely on. So, from harvesting trees to processing the pulp, this stage of sourcing raw materials is the foundation for creating high-quality toilet paper. We move to the processing and manufacturing phase. This is where the wood pulp, now in its purest form, gets transformed into the familiar toilet paper rolls we all know. Let's take a closer look at how this transformation happens. The first step in the manufacturing process is blending. The wood pulp is mixed with water to create a slurry, which is a thick, watery paste made up of pulp fibers. This slurry is pumped through a series of machines to ensure it's well mixed and consistent. Imagine the pulp as a thick, soupy mixture, ready to be spread into thin sheets. Once the slurry is prepared, it moves on to a huge machine called the Fordrinier machine, which helps form the pulp into large, continuous sheets. The slurry is spread evenly over a mesh conveyor belt, which runs at high speeds. As the slurry passes through this mesh, the water is drained away, leaving behind a thin layer of pulp. The pulp starts to dry out and solidify as it moves through the machine. You might be surprised to learn that this process looks a bit like the pulp is being squeezed between rollers, pressing the fibers into shape. At this point, the pulp is still very wet, but it's starting to take on the texture of paper. To dry it out completely, the sheet moves through dryer cans, large cylinders heated by steam. These cylinders help remove the remaining moisture from the paper, turning it into a dry, sturdy sheet. This part of the process is important because the dryer can ensure the paper gets the right balance of moisture and dryness. If it's too wet, it'll be too soft and difficult to handle, and if it's too dry, it won't be absorbent enough. Once the paper is dry, it's passed through rollers that smooth it out and give it the right thickness. These rollers are crucial because they help control the thickness and texture of the toilet paper. The smoothness of the final product is key to making sure the toilet paper feels soft and gentle on the skin. Can you imagine how many adjustments the machine has to make to ensure that each roll has the right texture and softness? As the paper continues to move through the machine, it's cut into the desired size. The large continuous sheet is sliced into smaller sections, which are then wound into large cores to form the toilet paper rolls. This process involves huge rolls of paper being cut, pressed and rolled up tightly onto cardboard cores. At this point, the toilet paper is still in large rolls, but these are going to be sliced down into smaller individual rolls that we purchase in stores. The winding process is another crucial part of manufacturing. It's done using machines that ensure each roll is tightly packed and perfectly shaped. These winding machines control the pressure of the paper, making sure it's rolled with just the right amount of firmness. If the paper is rolled too tightly, it could be difficult to unroll, and if it's too loose, it could tear easily. This step ensures that each toilet paper roll is strong enough for use while maintaining its softness. Now that we have our large toilet paper rolls, the next step is to cut them down to a convenient size. Large rolls are sliced into smaller individual rolls, each the size you would find in a typical pack of toilet paper. The cutting is done by machines that slice through the paper with sharp precision, creating rolls of consistent size. At this point, we've got the raw toilet paper rolls ready for the next stage. These rolls are moved to the assembly line, where they will be wrapped, packaged, and prepared for shipping to stores. Before this, they go through a quick check to make sure they're correctly rolled and sized, which ensures they will meet quality standards once they hit the shelves. Can you imagine how many steps are involved in producing just one roll of toilet paper? From mixing the slurry and forming the paper to drying, smoothing, rolling, and cutting, each step ensures the final product is soft, strong, and ready to serve its purpose. The process relies on machines that work efficiently together, with careful monitoring to ensure quality at each stage. And yet, it all happens incredibly fast. In just a few minutes, massive sheets of pulp are transformed into neatly rolled toilet paper ready for packaging. Now that the toilet paper has been processed and is ready to be shaped into individual rolls, it moves to the assembly line. This is where all the individual pieces come together to form the final product that we use every day. The assembly line is fast-paced and efficient, designed to ensure that each roll of toilet paper is properly wrapped and ready for the next steps. But how does it all come together? At the start of the assembly line, the large rolls of toilet paper are moved from the manufacturing area to the assembly machines. These rolls are quite big and heavy, but don't worry, they're handled with ease by the machines. The first step in the assembly line is to cut these large rolls into the size we're familiar with the smaller rolls you see on store shelves. 
The cutting machines are sharp and precise, slicing the large rolls into the perfect size, ensuring each roll is ready to be packaged. Once the toilet paper is cut to size, it's placed on a winding machine. The winding machine's job is to make sure the paper is rolled tightly, giving it just the right amount of firmness. If the roll is wound too loosely, it could fall apart when you try to pull the paper off, and if it's too tight, it might be hard to unwind. The machine ensures that each roll has the ideal tension. These winding machines can make hundreds of rolls in just a short amount of time, showing how efficient the process is. But it's not just machines that make this process work smoothly, there's also human skill involved. Operators are stationed at various points along the assembly line to oversee the process. They make sure everything is running correctly and step in to fix any problems that might arise. If a machine malfunctions, they can quickly step in and adjust it, keeping the production line running without much interruption. This balance between human oversight and machine efficiency ensures that everything works as it should. The assembly line might seem simple, but there are many moving parts working together to ensure each roll of toilet paper is of the highest quality. The machines work efficiently, cutting, winding, and wrapping the toilet paper while operators keep things running smoothly. At each step of the way, there's attention to detail to make sure the product is up to standard. The toilet paper rolls being produced and properly shaped undergo the quality control stage. This part of the process is important because it ensures that each roll meets the high standards for softness, strength, and overall quality before they are shipped out. So how exactly does quality control work in a toilet paper factory? At the start, each roll is examined for visual defects. Workers check for any obvious issues, like uneven rolls, wrinkles, or holes in the paper. If a roll is damaged in any way, it's immediately set aside and removed from the production line. This quick inspection helps catch any major flaws before they make it further down the process. Then comes the more detailed inspections. Tension testing is one of the most important aspects of quality control. When toilet paper is being wound, it must be rolled with the right amount of tension. If it's too tight, the paper can become too stiff and might rip when you try to use it. On the other hand, if it's too loose, the paper could unravel or feel flimsy. Machines are set to measure this tension at different points along the assembly line. If a roll is too tightly or too loosely wound, it's flagged for correction. Another common test is softness. Toilet paper should feel soft against the skin, which is why this is one of the most important checks. Softness is measured by the field test, which might involve a machine that mimics human touch to measure how soft the paper is. If the softness doesn't meet the set standards, the paper may be sent back for adjustments, or the machine settings may be modified to ensure a softer texture in the next batch. Absorbency is another key aspect of quality control. Toilet paper is designed to absorb moisture, and if it's too thin or the fibers aren't strong enough, it won't perform as well. Absorbency is tested by wetting the paper and measuring how much liquid it can hold before breaking down. A roll that doesn't absorb properly is removed and sent for adjustments. But what happens if a product doesn't meet these quality standards? What if a roll doesn't pass one of the tests? In most cases, the factory can fix the issue without disrupting production. If a roll is found to be too soft or not absorbent enough, it may be sent back for reprocessing. This can involve adjusting the machine settings or blending in different types of pulp to improve the quality. Sometimes, if the issue is more severe, the roll may be sent to a different use, such as being repurposed for industrial applications where softness or absorbency is less of a concern. The key to a smooth operation is that these fixes are done quickly, so production doesn't slow down. There are always backup plans in place to make sure that the lines keep moving while ensuring that each roll is checked thoroughly. The efficiency of the quality control system means that even if a problem arises, it's caught early and corrected without causing delays. The toilet paper rolls have passed all the quality checks, and it's time for the packaging and distribution process. This is where the product is prepared for the shelves, ensuring it reaches you in the best possible condition. But how does toilet paper go from being a roll on a conveyor belt to sitting in your bathroom? The first step in the packaging process is grouping the rolls. After the toilet paper rolls are inspected and confirmed to meet quality standards, they're placed together in packs. These packs can range in size from a small four-roll pack for home use to much larger bulk packages for commercial purposes. Workers or machines align the rolls and arrange them in neat stacks, ensuring that they fit well together and look organized. 
Next, the rolls are placed into plastic or paper wrap. Most common toilet paper packaging is made from plastic film because it's durable, light, and helps keep the paper dry. In some cases, companies are shifting towards more sustainable materials like recyclable plastic or biodegradable wraps to reduce environmental impact. This type of packaging ensures that the product stays clean, dry, and protected from moisture during transportation. Once the rolls are wrapped, they move on to the sealing station. Here, the packs are sealed tightly to make sure no air or dust can get in. The seal is crucial for maintaining the freshness of the toilet paper and ensuring that it stays in great condition until it reaches the store shelves. After sealing, the product is often labeled with brand names, expiration dates, and barcodes for easy identification at retail locations. What materials are used for packaging, and how does it affect the environment? The most common materials are plastic films and cardboard boxes. Plastic is lightweight and easy to handle, making it ideal for shipping and storing. However, it does raise concerns about environmental impact, as plastic waste is a growing issue. Many companies are now opting for recyclable plastic or even paper-based packaging to make their products more eco-friendly. By using these materials, the industry is trying to strike a balance between practicality and sustainability. After the toilet paper packs are wrapped, sealed and labeled, they are ready for distribution. The packs are loaded onto pallets, large platforms that can hold many packs at once. These pallets are moved by forklifts and placed into storage areas or directly onto trucks for transport. The toilet paper will then be shipped out to distribution centers or retailers where it will be stocked on the shelves for you to purchase. At every stage of the distribution process, the goal is to keep the toilet paper in pristine condition. Packaging ensures that the product stays safe, dry and clean throughout its journey from the factory to your home. Have you noticed any packaging innovations in the products you buy? Some brands are doing their part to reduce waste by using eco-friendly packaging, while others are experimenting with more sustainable materials. Do you pay attention to these efforts when choosing products? Share your thoughts in the comments. The packaging and distribution process is all about ensuring that you get the best quality toilet paper when you need it. From the wrapping and sealing to shipping it out to stores, each step is designed to protect the product and deliver it safely to you. From the moment the wood fibers are harvested to when the toilet paper is neatly packaged and shipped to stores, a lot goes into creating the product we use every day. First, raw materials like wood pulp are processed into sheets, which are then dried, cut and rolled into the toilet paper we know. Throughout the process, every roll is tested for quality, ensuring softness, strength and absorbency. Afterwards, the rolls are packaged in plastic or paper, sealed and stacked into pallets for easy transport. The production of toilet paper is a fascinating blend of efficiency and complexity, with machines and human skills working together to ensure that the product is made quickly, safely and to high standards. From the manufacturing plant to the shelves of your local store, every step plays a role in delivering a quality product to your home. What did you think of the process? Is there another product you'd like to see behind the scenes of Next? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed learning about how everyday products are made, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. We'll be bringing you more exciting insights into how products are made.